Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is on cardiac lecture number 39, cardiac medications that affect the heart rate. All right, let's get going. So in my previous lectures, I've talked about cardiac medications individually. And, you know, in this lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit more about just, you know, a specific term called chronotropic. Now, chronotropic is from the uh, Greek god, uh, the god of time. And what we might know it as, as far as the time clock, it's also called chronos. And, you know, it's about things that affect the time. And when we're talking about time, it's either going to speed up the heart rate or low down, slow down the heart rate. And that's what it means, chronotropic. So you're either going to have a uh, negative chronotropic or a positive chronotropic. A negative chronotropic means it's going to slow down the heart rate. And then a positive chronotropic means it's going to increase the heart rate. And that's what that means. All right, so when we're talking about, you know, anticipating, anticipating a negative chronotropic, that's what they're talking about. All right, so let's go into the list. And this is from, most of these medications are acute. And it's from my sticky note, a hand-sewn lad. And those are all acute um, meds. And when you see these meds, they probably uh, have to do with um, an acute process. Please see that lecture. And it's also from this sticky note here, uh, where I give a good overview of negative chronotropic versus um, positive chronotropic. All right, so let's get into it. So the medications. So triple A, B, C, uh, double Ds. All right, so. A, atropine. So atropine is given for uh, symptomatic bradycardia. And bradycardia is defined by uh, less than 60 heart rate. And if they're symptomatic, they're cool and clammy, or chest pain, or, you know, the diaphoretic, that's symptomatic. So they're going to need um, atropine. And atropine, well, because it's a low heart rate, we want it to speed up so it's a positive chronotropic. The next one, adenosine. So adenosine, I say, please see my lecture um, on adenosine. Adenosine is on the scene to stop PSVT. And in PSVT, you have a very fast rhythm. And that rhythm, SVT, is anywhere 180s, you know, to 280s or 290. It's really super, super fast. And what we need to do is, is we give adenosine. And what adenosine does is it stops the heart rate. Okay. So when it's going really fast, when you give adenosine, you give 6 milligrams IV push now. Stat, right? And you flush it with a... Uh, normal saline really quick. Well, the interesting thing that happens to the rhythm is that it flatlines. You actually kill the patient. And then hopefully the SA node refocuses and goes back to sinus. Um, if that doesn't work, uh, we might give 12 milligrams. Okay. IV push. And we can repeat that. And um, if it doesn't correct, then we go to electricity. Please see my lecture on adenosine. So that would make it, so if it's going to slow down the heart rate, it's going to make it a negative chronotropic. All right. Amiodarone, which I like to say amyslodarone. Okay, so there you go. There's a key right there. Slows down, slow down, right? So what does it do? It it's, works on the calcium potassium channels, and it goes from the SA node to the AV node. And when you have like VTAC and it's super fast. Well, we need to slow this method down. And what it does is a mislodorone deals with this. So it slows down the conduction going through this, through the AV node specifically, and hopefully to convert that rhythm to sinus. We also use it in patients who have um, AFib atrial fibrillation. Please see my lecture on that. And where AFib 
AFib is funny because it might have a super uh, RVR, rapid ventricular rate. And because it's conducting, and it, it sometimes rates can be variable, hundreds to 140s. And that's problematic, more risking for the heart. So they put them on amyxloderone to try to convert the rhythm or to uh, slow it down. All right, so once again, that would make it a negative chronotropic. Beta blocker. Well, beta agonist increases the heart rate. Um, so, like uh, dobutamine. But so that means that a beta blocker will slow down the heart rate. So it would have a negative chronotropic. Please see my lecture on beta blockers. That's why we monitor heart rate and uh, blood pressure right, prior to giving it because of this negative chronotropic. And what you're doing is beta is responsible for beating the heart, right? So the beta receptor sites. And that increases contraction. So if we if we have a problem with, we want things to slow down, especially with an MI, we'll give them beta blockers and to slow things down. All right, the next one is a calcium channel blocker. Um, well, a calcium channel blocker, specifically uh, diltiazem, cardizem, I say in my previous lecture, DVAV, AV for rate. Okay, so understand that these two medications are specifically going to affect the rate. That's diltiazem or cardizem in verapamil. Please see my lecture on calcium channel blockers. So what's going on with that? Well, that's also going to, from the SA node to the uh, AV node, to the uh, bundle of his, to the Purkinje fibers, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to slow down, you know, calcium channels on the, um, on the cell. It, what it does is it blocks those. Calcium's hard and it's responsible for contraction. And... When you start to block it, we're starting to slow things down. And a lot of times they give diltiazem to convert AFib to get it into a normal sinus rhythm. Generally on an IV cardizem, you don't go greater than 24 hours with that medication. So it's also a negative chronotropic. All right, the next one is digoxin. Well, digoxin is a little bit interesting because it slows down calcium glycoside. It slows down conduction, but it also will increase, uh, have a positive chronotropic um, uh, effect. Uh, no, a positive inotropic effect. I'll talk about that more when we get into inotropic. And then dopamine. Okay, Dopamine will increase heart rate. Right, be the beta agonist. So we talked about that with beta blockers. Beta blockers slow down the heart rate. So dopamine is actually a positive inotropic. Because when you put on a dopamine drip, you know, the first thing is the heart is going to start to increase really high. And what happens is, is that um, a lot of times it's very scary. So like for, for new nurses and stuff like that, you see the heart rate go to 140s. A lot of times in the ER, doctors will see that. And they, they're very worried about it and they'll stop it because the heart is too, too risky to you know get them out of the ER, send them up to the ICU or, or something like that. So positive chrono, chrono, chronotropic uh, means too fast. So here we go. So we have adenosine, atropine, amiodarone, beta blockers, calcium, digoxin, and dopamine. In my next lecture, I'm going to talk about inotropic in the force of contraction. Well, that's about it for me. Uh, that's from my sticky note um, called Cardiac Medications. And I can be found on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Google, Etsy, Twitter, and nursingcamp.com. That's it. Nurse on.